Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with episode 253 of Ask Dave. I thought during the time of national quarantine for the COVID-19 virus, perhaps I'll put out a few more videos, a little shorter, uh, just kind of to touch bases maybe every day or so and uh, give us something to do while we're staring at the four walls in our home. I know my wife and I got so bored today, we decided to just go out for a ride. So we went riding in the mountains up here, not bothering anybody, uh, and picked up our mail and came on home. So I've been sent this radio to review. It's uh, from Bridgecom Systems, and it's an Anytone DMR mobile radio. But I had a problem. This. I have a VHF UHF antenna outside, but the cable on the inside of the shack was bad. Uh, the, uh, the PL259 was bad. So I cut it off because I'll show you in the video why and put the new one on. So that's our job for the next several minutes is to put on the new connector. It's RG8X and I'm going to put a cable on it. The one I had on it ran into trouble with the thing rotating like this and it kind of disconnected all of the wiring that's around there. You can see the stuff rotate back and forth and it just did not make a good connection so we're going to do away with the soldered connector and put a crimp connector on here and to do that I'm going to use this kit I got from QS Radio and they have Quicksilver radios what they call themselves QS Radio and it talks how to use the various parts here this right here I've got a whole bunch of stuff in this kit. Uh, some of the newer kits have round things that you put around the end of this and it cuts everything just right. I need to get some of those. I don't have them. What I do have is this right here. And what this does is we're going to put this around here. This is uh, like this and it opens like that and you see those teeth right there they're going to strip into the cable so we're going to put this over the cable and then we turn it while very carefully holding the cable so that it does not turn and we turn it several times until it's completely free now what we're going to have to do if we pull that off of there then Okay, this leaves us with a center conductor which is too long. That's okay, we can fix that. And one thing I want to make sure I do before I go any further, I think they call this a ferrule. Um, we're going to put that over there and down over that because we need that there. Now, you see that... Uh, I'm going to spread the, and we want to make sure that there's none left in here. See right there, we've got all the braid back here. Now we put the thing that we're going to squeeze on right here, and then that needs to very nicely, whoops, see we, we lost a, This has to thread in there and then out through the top without any pieces bending in there. Okay, then this part right here goes over the white part. See that? It just fits. Okay, and then we put the braid up around it like that and then we're going to take the ferrule and put it up 
and over that like that and then we're going to crimp that we crimp that and we solder that so we're going to crimp that now to crimp it let me just put it down gently to crimp it we need the crimp tool which is this which happens right at the moment to be set up for Anderson power pole connectors so they provide a screwdriver it's supposed to be a Phillips screwdriver but yeah, I guess it is. Okay, we take the nut, I'm sorry, the screw out of each side here. That allows the jaw to come off. And we take the other out here. And the other jaw comes off. Now we need to find the right jaws. There is this jaw, which is for like RG8 or RG213 or LMR400. And then there's this jaw, which picks up the LMR240, uh, the RG8X. And use a slightly smaller one for the RG58, but we're using RG8X. So we put these jaws in. They fit together like that. See, there's two jaws. And we'll put these jaws in. And it goes like this. Yeah, it goes like that. You want the jaw end down here at the bottom. I'll slide that out a little bit so you can see that. We want that all the way down there to the bottom. That's the hole we're going to put the screw in. So we do that with the Phillips screwdriver. And then the other jaw goes in opposite that. Okay. Then we put the screw in. This is a black tool so it's hard to just see in the light okay now if we close the jaws we can see how they line up with each other and you crimp and there we go. So all we need to do now is to crimp this. We push this on as far as it will go and get that ferrule right up next to it. Now I'm going to hold on the wire here because that holds everything in place and we're going to use that last jaw right up next to the connector and we're going to crimp, and this is going to take some doing. Okay, that is now crimped on there. Okay. Now we're going to put all the crimp tools away. And do some soldering. Let me put these in here. This is a real nice little kit, because it will not only do uh, crimping coax connectors, but you can also do Anderson power pole connectors with this. It's got the right jaw for doing that. And uh, we just got a new radio to test, so we're going to be using that. So we'll put that there. These are the Ander uh, those are the Anderson power poles right there. That's the other one. Okay, I'm going to set this aside for a minute. So I'm going to come back for a subsequent short video and talk about the Anderson power pole connectors. Now we have to solder that on. To do that, it's helpful to have some kind of a little tool that will hold this thing reasonably steady. Okay. 
So this is what I'm going to use right here. Now I'm going to get my solder station. Okay, now, normally my solder station over here, back up a bit, see if we can see it. This is my solder station. It's a very common solder station on my page uh, at uh, decaster.com slash Amazon you'll find a link for a very similar solder station this particular one's out of uh, production but it gives you temperature control over the tip it also gives you hot air so that you can work and by hot air I mean extraordinarily hot air hundreds of degrees this is Celsius by the way try and get one in Fahrenheit if you're in the US it's easier to deal with okay it claims the tip is hot but actually what it's measuring it has a little uh, measuring device in here well the actual tip is out here so we're going to give this a few seconds to warm all the way up now I note that I've got a massive tip on this thing and I'm not going to get it down where I can touch it but I just want to make sure it'll focus um, that's a big tip and that'll hold a lot of heat so when you go to solder something like a connector uh, and you use a tiny iron on it, it just isn't enough heat there. So this will hold enough heat in there that it can solder the connection before the tip cools down. So we'll just come in here like this and put that on there and by the way the shakiness is an artifact of age called um, essential tremor. Now, frankly, I see nothing essential about it, but uh, that is soldered beautifully, probably over soldered. And so now I have a complete connection. As soon as I trim off that and get rid of those extra solder globules over there, so I did get some extra solder on the thing see if we can just kind of wipe that away otherwise it is hard for it to go into the radio I have a grinder I can do it that way okay we turn off the soldering iron and we're going to let it completely cool before we move it because this holds quite a bit of heat over here in the iron this is the little cleaning pad does a very nice job. Um, I really like this solder station. It's much less than $100. And um, yeah, it's Chinese, but it works. It works really well. This is the heat gun. Now, this is not your average heat gun. This heat gun, there's air coming out of up this tube, but the actual heating element is a quartz element up in here. And you've got different sizes of these little blowers that you can get. And what you do with these when doing work on surface mount devices, you can blow on it, the solder will melt, and then you pick up the device with the tweezer. Um, it's, that's why this is called an SMD rework station, because it's designed for surface mount devices. And if you get the fine tip for here, you can solder surface mount devices under a microscope. It's a nice little thing. It's also useful for general purpose uh, soldering work. Okay, now we need to trim this thing off here. Right at the... there. Okay. Now if we look at this carefully, we see that that is soldered in. We also see a little extra solder on the sides of this thing so um, I'm going to unscrew this okay um, and I'm going to uh, just use a grinder on that real quick yeah I think that was probably overkill for what I needed to do there. Okay. Now, 
got that on. We're ready to begin testing. All right, we're ready to go with that. And I found this. And what's that? That's me tooting my own horn. Go to dcastler.com support and look for ways that you can support this channel financially. So there it is. I blew my own horn. Until we next meet, 73.